Hey folks, welcome back to our uh, tips and video tutorials here. This one is working with the product catalog page. Uh, in this particular demonstration, what I'll show you is I'll show you how to update the picture, as we do. Um, also, we have these little links right here, the add to cart, click to click uh, here for details. We'll show you how to update or remove those because they link to the product details page. Now, if you're going to be using a product details page for your products, we've included just the one example page in the site. So you need to create a copy uh, of, e of, of the product details page for each product you want. Uh, we'll demonstrate how to do that as well. Uh, the product name, you'll be updating this. Now, we have here the Add to Cart. This is a PayPal form button. We're not going to update it. We're going to replace it. I'll take you to the PayPal website. I'll, I provided a link in the... Uh, the instructions or the, the web page that uh, take you there. Um, you can always just go to Google and type in a PayPal button generator if you if the link changes at any point in time. Um, and we'll show you how to create your own button and replace the one here. The reason being is uh, this one here has a drop menu which is really cool and you can modify that but the PayPal button generator has so many options you can make specific buttons directly for your needs. You don't have to try and rip apart and retool the button that's, that we use for the demonstration. It's actually a lot easier to just go and create your own so that way you're not mucking about in the form code and the HTML and um, you can get some specific things in there like options and colors or shipping and taxes that we, we can't possibly include the whole array of a form button options so it's easier just to create your own and lastly we'll uh, we'll um, change the the price right here or get rid of the was 99 or change the word sale to price or something like that so let's just jump in here so the first thing we need to do is when we're replacing an image uh, the image size we're using is a uh, well that doesn't even tell us so what we're going to do is find out where the image comes from um, these images are stored in the site themed images pages catalog folder so let's open up that folder site themed images pages catalog there it is there now there's our pictures if I click it it tells me 400 by 400 this is one of those cases where we've used a larger image although this is not a 400 by 400 image but we've used a larger image here for the catalog page because if you want you can reuse that larger image in your product details page right so whatever size image you go with I would still suggest you go with 400 by 400 because it's square and it'll fit in here nicely and look nice and uniform so I'll start off with that I'll go to my uh, my little folder here with some different images there's my 400 by 400 I'll just drag and drop that right in there then I can uh, double click on the pick go to the browse button and I'll browse to my uh, site I'll browse to my themed images folder my pages and finally my catalog folder and there's the replacement image there I'll select it and click open and OK and it, see it blows up like this yeah this is where you double click do the appearance and then the specify size get rid of that and down it goes again now when you watch the video I'm working with the product details page you can now if you really wanted to you could reuse this image right in that same page instead of using the one single image that we actually have so you could copy this image over um, just do a do one of these do this uh, copy go to the product details page you could you know paste it in there if you wanted to um, or you could just link directly into the catalog folder totally up to you uh, now the next thing we do is change the product name and we use the two different font styles uh, so you can just single click. I really suggest when you see these two different font styles, and it's best to sort of be previewed in the browser here first. You go, okay, so we have a regular, then a bold. Uh, if I were updating this, I'd probably just select it, flip over to the, the code view, change the product, and then the name so the span class doesn't get knocked out of place. Because Expression Web sometimes does that when, with span classes. It drives me nuts, but it happens. So totally up to you. If it doesn't matter, just scrub over the whole thing. New name and then you're done right um, that's sort of the product name then we have the PayPal button right here so what we're gonna do let's go to the actual let's pull this up in a web browser let's go to the link that we provided here is the buy now button the, the button generator so I'm going to go through and fill in some stuff here uh, just so I could generate some button code and be careful make sure you fill in all the bells and whistles here and especially 
the email address to receive payments. This is the email address that you have on account with PayPal um, that people would send money to using your email address because that's really all this form does. It takes all the information, zings it off to PayPal and says, hey, pay this person using this email address this amount of money. Okay, so let me get that done. All right, so I've gone in, I've added all the fields here. Um, I've even created a customized button with a little drop down so I can have different prices right here for different things. And uh, you can fiddle around with this until you get it exactly the way you want. And the really cool thing is it does show you right here what your, your visitor will see in the page. So it kind of makes sense, right? And you can also, the nice thing is when, <clears throat> when you have a uh, item and then a price that displays, that's the actual price to get charged. It's not just a title piece of text. It's an actual... Um, that's what they actually get charged, which is nice. So we hit the create button, and what we're doing, we're going to do is on this page here is is hit the select code, and then right click and copy. Okay. Now back to our editor. Uh, just click the button right here. Flip over to code view, and what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing this form target PayPal right here, where it says form target and PayPal. I want you to on the word form just right click and do the select tag. Just like that. Now, if you've gone directly from the copy back to your editor and did the right click and select tag, you can actually just directly edit and paste or control V in your keyboard. And that will paste in the new code. And I can tell because this one says shoe one, and that's my ID number, and that's my email address. And you go, hey, cool. Now I'm going to be a little bit on the tidy side here. Just select this and hit the tab key to line things back up. Right? And that's how you update your PayPal button. And that will work in your catalog page as well as the PayPal button you have for your uh, uh, product details. As a matter of fact, this is the point in time if you if you've know if you know you were going to use a product details page for each item, this is probably a good time to go and create at least a copy of each page. So in this case, I would do the copy paste. Now I called it shoe one, right? That's that's the name of this particular product. So I'm going to change it from product details to product shoe one. All right. I'm going to open up shoe one. I'm going to click my PayPal button right here and go right to the code view. Back to my open page. I'm going to copy. Uh, do the right click, select tag, and update the form right away. So that way. I'm going to do both form updates at the same time because they both have PayPal buttons, right? I might as well get the code done, boom, and out of the way. I can save and I can close and come back to this later on, but I won't have to fiddle around with uh, doing the PayPal buttons after that, right? So we've changed the picture, we've changed the name, we've updated the PayPal button code. Right. Now we have this old was 99, sale 69, and this is basically just regular text, um, so wrapped in a, a, a span tag. You can get rid of this if you don't want it. It's the There's the category price right there. So if we actually click on the number, we go up to the, the div tag here. If you want to get rid of it, just select the div cat price and delete it. Okay, because that's just a little bonus thing we've thrown in there. It kind of looked cool, so we did it. But you may not want it, and then you may need to change the name sale to price or whatever you want to call it and then just there's the number right there so you can go ahead and make those little tweaks if you want to and of course if you just need to change the information that's there the number right here 99 it's pre-styled to have that little line scratch through it and that's why we have it wrapped in a special div tag called uh, thumb cat price because it, it allows us to add a special little scratch through so if I type in a new number it's still going to retain that that line through effect right there right? so if you don't want it get rid of the whole thing and then it's gone and really that's all there is to the the working with the catalog page is updating the thumb container there and uh, the name the PayPal button the price oh one other thing the link of course Let's go to our catalog page. So when we hover over, we have the add to cart and the click here for details. Well, both of these currently link to our main single product details page. Well, guess what? Now that we've got a product shoe page that we've created based on the product details page, we want to make sure that when somebody hovers over the first item, that it links to the new product details page that we've created called product shoe. So once again, selecting the picture, we'll go to code view. 
and we're going to look for the product details link right down here and right down here. And this is why I've named it product-shoe1 because all I have to do at this point is double click on the word details, type in shoe1, go down here, details, shoe1, and I'm done. Right, I don't have to be very fussy. And I'm always going to keep my product detail pages the, or the copies of them in the same folder as my catalog page so that way all I have to do when I'm updating the link is just change the name from product details to product then the name of the product and that's why I use something simple that I can quickly type in here and identify.